is my name. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Shut up, dog. Fucking dog. Ah, oh, you're smoking. This is real. Perfect. This is real Mexican stuff. Smoking so, cigarettes. Shall we start? Here. Yeah, yeah, it's already recording. So, uh, all right. So, today we are going to discuss, there's a moth, sorry, the Iliad and Homer. And with me is Michelle from Mexico, who has volunteered to do this. And so maybe I'll start by getting him to uh, yeah, say, to introduce himself and maybe start off by talking about Homer a little bit his as a historical figure and his writing style. So if you want to say yeah, about yourself. Yeah, well, uh, it's well known that there's a dispute about about Homer as a as an historical figure because we don't exactly know that whether he exist uh, whether he existed and he he really wrote the whole of the Iliad and the Odyssey because mm-hmm. most most people guess that as as Homer never wrote anything uh, the poems the poems were all uh, were all as a as a speaking form instead of a writing form of art right no one really knows who wrote them right uh, there's no account of that so it's really weird because most people we attribute we attribute the the the, the work to to just one man because we like to do this in 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 the western <laughs> the western countries we have to attribute this wonderful masterpiece to just one man because right, right. I really think it's impossible for 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 many people to to come up with such a cohesive uh, uh, with such a such a voice such such a unified voice that right. my guess is it was just one man and that man was Homer so. Uh, yeah, that's I not, that, that's I, not I, I much he, debate to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's probably one guy. I mean, there's sculptures even depicting him, so they had an idea of specifically what he looked like. And you know, the Greeks weren't people to like make things yeah. up. Really, they, they were very literal people. So I would guess he's a, a real guy. He was just the last of the oral tradition yeah, yeah. Uh, bards who was there to recite it, and someone recorded it. And so he became the last, the great hero of it, even though it had been oral tradition for God knows how long. Well, I, I, they have some idea how long. Maybe you know. I don't. I, I can't remember right now. But there's lots of uh, oral yeah. tra- tradition knowledge. That, yeah, he was. Uh, he was a. Uh, it, it was. Uh, you have to take into account also that it was uh, eight centuries before, before Christ. It mm-hmm. was the this, this this was the eighth century. So that was before what we know as uh, as the cultural period. Of mm-hmm. ancient Greece, like yep. the time of Socrates, uh, Plato, Aristotle, all that—that that was around uh, the third and fourth. In the eighth century before Christ, there mm-hmm. wasn't much account into the people weren't used to to write as much right. uh, about art because right. art was uh, art was seen as more as a or not not only as an oral projection but also as a as a in the moment projection you know like yep. theater you know yep. uh, theater you had to be there you yep. had to be you had to experience the work of 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 you had to experience the work or uh, of art by yourself by yep. hearing by listening by watching the the artist directly right. and not by some account of a book you know like right. a written right. tragedy so so that so yeah. that's why we don't have much information about about those times, but right. I still have my hunch tell me it was Homer, and I will believe it all my life that it was Homer. <laughs> <laughs> I no, think so too. Even just no uh, just the fact that they, we can, that. just the fact we can see his face and everything too. I mean, it really makes me think he was a guy, a real guy, and supposedly he was blind and everything else, which would make for a good oral bar. Yeah, I guess, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just. Uh, I don't. There's there there's a lot of debate going on still, but I don't think it's it's important. We have the we have the art, we have the the, the masterpiece, the yeah. masterpiece of that was the Iliad, the masterpiece that was the Odyssey. It's an account, an oral tradition account that was, I mean, the events of the Iliad were again like and to 
that much farther back before they even got recorded. So they, it was handed down for like a long, long time from different guys. Yeah. So let's yeah, let's move course. on to my first question. My first question here. So let's say what do I have? The Iliad yeah. is a strange story when you first read it, similar to other religious texts such as the Bible. Uh, but like the Bible, it seems it, it also seems partially an account of ancestry and genealogy and so forth, and like real events and a mythic hero worship that's. Uh, or like a hero, a, a real event that becomes mythic over uh, over time, or even when it happened. But similar to the Bible, I want to see if you agree yeah. that there, there's an element of like there's long lists of names of, of so and so was the son of so and so. It's this kind of uh, record of genealogy at the same time, sort of ancestral historical uh, hero worship. So, what do you think about that? Yeah, I just took off the video, so maybe it's that. Okay, we'll try that. Yeah, we'll try okay. that. So, uh, if you remember what I said, uh, what do you think about that? That it's a sort of a record, a historical account, and what? How is it? If it's if if as I say, it's similar to the Bible and other histor other religious texts where it's relating ancestral uh, famous figures. Mm. I don't know. What do you what do you what do you think about that? This is a really interesting point, uh, Rand, because este, because of what I said earlier about. Uh, the, the 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 Iliad as a such a well made such a well structured piece of art that it can be just made by just one man. Yeah. Um, the Bible is not like that. You clearly, and I mean the Bible is a great piece of of of, of writing. I mean, the Bible is a really well written piece of of of, of mythology, if you will, no, or yeah. historical yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you clearly, you don't have to be an expert on literature to, to really see that the Bible is written, well, well, sorry, the Bible was written by many, many, many different men, no? Yeah, yeah. You don't see that in the Iliad. You don't see absolutely nothing about that. The, the, no. the, uh, through, the, uh, through the first to the last verse, you see the voice of, 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 of one vision, of one man, no? Mm -hmm. and, and well, it's mostly well. That was the first point, and the the, the second point about this is that uh, you really have to take into account that uh, in the West uh, we have been dominated the last uh, the last millennium mm -hmm. by Judeo Christian values. No. Yes. Yes. Yep. So it's really. In a sense, it's really, it's really eye-opening to read the values that were before that. No, you know, like like the, yeah. the ancient Greece values. No, the the, 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 yeah. the revenge, the the revenge of, of, of Achilles. You know, the, the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it's, it's, that, very, it's very it's very different from biblical values. It's very different, almost the opposite in some ways, in many ways. Yeah. It, it's not almost the opposite. It's the opposite, pretty much. You know, it's really fun for me because it's the, because also the the sense of we can we can take it out in the sense of the honor because there is also honor in the Bible in the Judeo Christian Bible. No, yeah. there is also a sense of honor, yeah. but it's not the same kind of honor. No, at all, at all. No. No. The because uh, the the Bible I'm talking about the Bible because I I also read the Bible <laughs> so yeah, yeah. In, and it's and it's I think the most familiar I was born and raised in Mexico so it's a Catholic country so I'm pretty familiar yeah. with with the Bible right right and um, that's why I'm talking about it well and, I brought it, I brought it up I've read it too and I you know I agree uh, with what you so far anyways but I, I was raised Catholic as well so. Well, yeah. so we, yeah. we we got that. So anyway, um, the kind of honor that exists in the in the Bible, yeah, is more of a, is more. How can I say this? Is more of 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 the honor of a whole uh, of a whole of a whole community, right? The honor yeah, 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 of yeah. a whole community coming yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Through through obedience to God mm -hmm. and through um, uh, 
selfishness selfish selfish or selfless uh, oh sorry selflessness right yeah right yeah selflessness of the material world and and how how can you and and, and and to be humble but not not as a human being not 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 as an individual but to be humble as a community you know to be to yeah. come together selflessly yeah. with humble yeah. and that that is the most honorable thing you can do to God yeah and sort of pacifist and um lots there's lots of uh, compassion like uh, caregiving for the poor and the the lepers yeah, and things. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's yeah, yeah. You know, and there's there's good ways about that that view to the world, but it's not. It doesn't have the the real courage and honor values of of Homer, like you say. Yeah, it's the, it's the polar opposite. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, those those ancient Greek values are most about the individual, about the hero, not as a community, the hero. You don't right. in, the, in the whole of the Iliad. You you barely you barely uh, read about someone who's not a hero. In fact, they are not named. No yeah. one is named but the heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, That's true. Even yeah, Paris is like even Paris is referred to as godlike and. Uh, yeah. You know, he's like Achilles. You know, yeah! 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 Yeah, so it's interesting. So it's a total that re, that reversal of there's not much there's nothing about turn the other cheek in the Iliad. It's all uh Oof, no, uh, never. No. 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 But like uh, so let me just say from my point of view, I found more uh how should I say, the Iliad resonated with me more than the Bible did when I read when I read after reading both personally, even though being yeah. raised Catholic. As the values there were I found more realistic and it's not so much sort of cowering and fearful you know everyone's afraid of dying and so forth but it wasn't so much it was like a courage above all that was the lesson of the heroes even though they were having a terrible time often and things were going badly and ended badly but even they they made their own decisions and they held duty and honor as paramount and you know it's like these things in life are going to happen to you anyways and it seemed I to me totally that the true original virtue that they were espousing was courage at its root. And even that can, that can be, you can look at that in your own life as it doesn't have to be like, you know, in war or whatever, but even to be sort of uh, irreverent or humor before death, to be anything but sort of simpering and cowardly or overly fearful, to wallow in fear and cowardice, which is just like a terror anyways. It just, you like terrorize yourself doing that. It, this is a value which is very absent in the modern world, I think, this attitude of... Because it's very sort of, it can be it can be irreverent, and you know it's tied up with duty, but it's also, um, it's not apologetic, and it's not worried about uh, appeasing sort of a a hidden figure who before whom you must lay down everything in subservience beforehand. As in their gods were more, the gods then were delighted in seeing them do outrageous things and heroic acts. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm losing myself I, blabbering here, but you no, get the idea. No, but, yeah. but I, I, I totally get the idea and I agree. I fully agree. Right yeah, now, okay. uh, and, it, and it's just not now, it's been, it's been since modern Europe. No, we've been, but. <laughs> It's it's really funny. We, we, I, I read the Bible and the and the Iliad for the first time mm -hmm. around the same time. I was like about eleven or twelve. And you read them both at the same time. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the same year, not not oh, not, yeah. not not at the yeah. same time, but yeah, oh, yeah, around. Yeah, and obviously it resonated. the The Bible is something really truly amazing, but it doesn't really truly hold. Uh, much values that I consider uh, worthwhile, at least as an individual self, as as, mm -hmm. as as myself, yeah, as as more like the like the Iliad. Did when I, when I read the Iliad, I was just I was just thinking like in a superficial way that I just want to be like this like this man. I want to grow up to be like this man. And, and and not just not not just in the sense that I want to go to war and and and, and kill some Trojans, no, yeah, but yeah. 
I want to be, I want to be this man who will do everything, anything for his friends, will do everything for love, and will hold, will, will die. I will be a man who will die and who knows who will die by doing the right thing, which is to hold love, to hold this passion, this, this, this passion, which, which, which uh, the, the, the Judeo-Christian values uh, uh, apparently don't like to have much passion, no? No. They, they, yeah. they, in fact, they hold, they hold themselves against, uh, uh, to have passion, to have lust, to yeah. have, to have this this form of love, no, it's more about serenity. It's, yeah. it's more it's more about this serenity piece of of, of love, no, not, not about this exploding rage of of, of, <laughs> of of making love, you know, making love to war, making love to life. Mm, yeah, and yeah. I don't, I I never like that about the Bible. That's why I I I, I told you, I told you I. Because God is not like that. God is like a really angry guy, you know. <laughs> Even in the Bible, he's pretty angry too. He's doing a lot of wrath, and uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The the values. See, what I like is that the heroes they have this choice, and like, there's the tragedy of reality is laid before them. There's not. There's no like in the Bible it hides all all tragedies and says, "Oh, everything will be fine in the end." Just you know, and you know, I do believe in like a, a life after death and so forth. Anyways. But yeah, I, I I just think they're, they're the the Homer's view of reality, besides being more real and embracing tragedy, is like you go ahead and you do the right thing anyways, even though there's no like reward necessarily, or maybe even it can be against what uh, <laughs> in the case of uh, certain you know characters it can be against what the gods want you to do, or this and that you know you do the right thing and you commit valor at all cost. And you hold your honor as this hidden thing that is above and beyond your own life. And it's something to be never be besmirched. And it's a good way to have, uh, it seems to me, a truer root of value for virtue than generally yeah. in the Bible. And that's all, like, and that, that it survived and existed in Europe because it was always there. And there was always, like, even, you know, and, and say it was lost for a time in the, in the medieval period, but the medieval period was still very pagan. Like, there was, you know, it was like it was still transitioning from paganism in a way because it was still like, you know, knights fighting dragons and witches and things all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the Renaissance they kind of brought it back even. So there, there was always you can see in any historical uh, European ant antiquity there's like alongside the church the biblical stuff there is always still the generally Greek or Roman uh, you know there's the the other pagan worship but generally Greek or Roman classicism is is there and it's you can tell it's still inspiring people and it's still what they want to hold on to and there's something there but it's the uh, it's the bitter cruel realism of it and the re and like it sounds maybe i'm not I'm, i should i should have thought of a way to word this better myself for what I, for what i think but like because it sounds harsh but there's how can i say it it's like uh just saying <laughs> you, 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 you embrace tragedy i've said it already i think you embrace the tragedy and you face it head on and you just kind of laugh at it and just like whatever right because it's all everything everything that happens in life is imposed on you anyways and it's like the gods or the energies of the world do this to you but it's happening and it, it exists and you have your choices so well, yeah yeah i don't yeah. i don't fully agree with that i think that that's more like a sisyphus uh, like a sisyphus kind of thing okay. where humanity is doomed to carry this big rock mm -hmm. Uh, up a mountain and yeah. when we get to the top of the mountain the, the rock falls and we start all over again right i i like that but i don't live by that i, I mean wh what i mean is I, I i don't i don't i don't really i don't think life is like that and the, I, I don't think the values that the the the, the spe specifically the values that the ancient greeks taught us Mm -hmm. are are not like that are more like uh, i have this quote by the greatest writer of all time which is fyodor dostoevsky at least for me okay yeah he's really uh, very good yeah yeah I, I mean i'm an obsessive about him and and i have this quote mm -hmm. which uh, w w when you were talking it reminded me okay about this it says man is a mystery it needs to be unraveled and if you spend your whole life unraveling it, don't mm -hmm. say that you wasted time. 
I am studying that mystery because I want to be a human being. Yeah. So right. yeah, we have yeah. this we have this este, this uh, this uh, storm of, of of whatever that life gives us. Yeah. Life life gives us sometimes sometimes shit, sometimes good, sometimes not. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but we have to we have to keep going but not just going like we we just don't have to 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 carry the rock to the top we have to fight the rock yeah we have to fight yeah. and we we will probably lose we will probably lose but well you'll matter. lose eventually one day you'll lose no matter what yeah <laughs> yeah, terms, yeah we, we, like, we are yeah. humans we yeah, like yeah. to suffer and yeah, we yeah. will probably lose there's probably one monk in the tibet that probably didn't lose and he's like full of of, of contemplative uh, yeah, one of the ones that uh, self mummified and he stopped eating for months and that now yeah, he's yeah, sitting yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah like like that guy I mean I mean that guy <laughs> probably won but <laughs> the most of us are gonna lose. <laughs> yeah yeah but well, we it's gotta like, keep fighting. We can like yeah, yeah the choice of Achilles like he you know he made it he made the choice to be remembered forever. He could have lived forever supposedly uh, he made the choice for eternal glory, and that was probably, and that's the lesson of it. Like that is the lesson. That's so unlike any other religion, really. Like people think of it as just a funny story and a myth. They don't, they, you have to think of it as this was the religion. You used to go to something like the mass, and you would hear stories of cyclopses and uh, kings in uh, Troy. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It's, it's not like yeah. it, it, it sounds of like course. a funny story for kids now, but no, this was the religion. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well. Um, now that you brought up uh, Achilles choices, I'd like to say something. Okay. Um, there is, uh, well, uh, there, there is four, four plot points crucial, and I'm analyzing, I'm analyzing the, the, the tragedy of Achilles as I don't like to analyze it because I like to more feel the work, but I think it's, yeah. it's important to break it uh, point by point, which I say there are four. First point, okay. uh, yep. uh, at the just in, the, in book one, yep. in book one, in the, the, the Agamemnon uh, takes a takes a woman slave for for his. It was common for warriors to take uh, woman slaves for yeah for, for whatever Cyrus. sexual I mean. desire they have. No, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So he takes a, a woman named Chrysais. If I'm saying it wrong in English, I'm sorry, but it's Chrysais. <laughs> was it? I thought it was like being with B, like a brus. No, no, no. That's 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 the one for, for that. Uh, that was the slave of Achilles. All oh, right. Okay. Sorry, I'm confused. Yeah, yeah because uh, but, but it was Chrysais, and este, okay. he got into an he got into a fight with. With his father because his father, the, the father of the slave, uh, gave like a really long list of gifts to Agamemnon, but Agamemnon just really wouldn't concede, wouldn't concede her, no? So, right. so Apollo, the god, mm -hmm. started a plague in in the in the in the in the whole settlement of the Greeks. Mm -hmm. So Agamemnon, Achilles, obviously got into his first uh, argument with with uh, with Agamemnon, mm -hmm. and Agamemnon reluctantly agrees to give back the slave to his Trojan father. Right. And as a, you know, as a, because Agamemnon was the king of kings, as a uh, ego boost, he took Achilles' slave, which was Briseis. That was it. Right. 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 And that that is basically the the total change. Or so, that was the the, the 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 how can you say the 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 most important thing, the crucial point of the war, yeah. right? Because right. It, this, this was before weeks before the war the war ended. But yeah. by taking Briseis away from Achilles, he unleashes his wrath, yeah, his anger, his yeah. passion. Yeah, that was the, that's the first point. The mm -hmm. second point. Obviously, uh, uh, Achilles, uh, as, as, as you know, Achilles refuses to fight, mm -hmm. and he he asks for his mother for his mother favor, so the Greeks lose the next fight, right? So he can make his point across, and the Greeks suffer like a really big loss loss against the Trojans, 
-hmm. And Agamemnon realizes of the mistake he has done. Mm -hmm. And he, he sends Odysseus, Ajax, and another guy, I don't remember who. But he says Odysseus, Ajax, and another who were friends of Achilles mm -hmm. with gifts and Briseis back as an apology. Yeah. And Achilles, please come back to work. And Achilles, everyone, every one of the Myrmidons were really happy because of the gifts and were satisfied where Achilles just gets more math. <laughs> and he says, like, like, no, like, yeah, like, F you, you know, uh, now yeah. you want me back. No, the only way I can come back to war is if the Trojans uh, get to my ships. That's the only yeah. way. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's a great point. Yes, because that, that, that reminds me too of the other lesson of the Iliad, which is true in life and inescapable, which is that life is struggle. Just like when he, uh, at the yeah. end, when, like at the end when Hector is pleading with him to, uh, return his body. When he knows he's defeated, he said, please return my body to my father. And he, yeah. uh, Achilles, Achilles says, something, what does he say? Uh, Fool, pray not to me about covenants. There can be no um, peace between men and lions and dogs and vultures hate each other. Ah, through yeah. And, through and through. This, this, like, so that, <laughs> this is the lesson of it, which is that you have enemies in the world and you will have differences which can't be reconciled and you will never, it's just like uh, Julius Evola says, you can never give up the concept of struggle and you can't. It's just there. No. This is this is the lie of the Bible, I would say, where you, you can just peacefully retreat from everything ad infinitum, but you can't. And even Christians have had to fight for themselves as well, and they know this. So it's it's like yeah, a fact. And not just turn the other cheek, you know? Yeah, you can only turn the other cheek. We're doing it a lot right now, but uh, you can only do it so far for so long. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. You, you, know. you got to struggle. You got to fight. I agree. That's the, way, that's the way God has set up the world. That's the way it is. So there, yeah. it's, it's a good lesson. It's a harsh lesson. Um, but it's and, truth. It's the truth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Struggle and revenge as well. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe in the end, there's a lesson at the end where he sort of, he does give his body back and there's he meets with Priam and all that and, you know, uh, has, shows some forgiveness as well. So there's some of that as well. That but, Because that is the, that is, that is actually my fourth point. Okay. Um, uh, because to understand why Achilles uh, gave back the body of Hector, yep. even after disgracing it, mm -hmm. we have to understand the the the, the, the these these points. You know, like we are uh, where Patroclus dies. Patroclus dies because he he wants to he wants to fight still. And he tells Achilles, Achilles gives him his 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 armor. Yeah. And that's why Hector confuses him at first. Yeah. And and and, and famously Achilles also tells uh, tells Hector, you know, you you naive, you fool, you thought you killed Achilles, but now yeah. I'm gonna kill you. No, no, you know, because Achilles Achilles is is, is a demigod. He's he's he's, yeah. he's 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 a lion. He's he's no, he's no human. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he has these char human characteristics, but exploding, in, exploding, exploding in such a manner that 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 he's a god, you know, like yeah. like he yeah. feels more than a human, and that's what makes him a god, a lion, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. the sun. Yeah. yeah. So um, he he then Achilles then. Uh, uh, when he hears about Patroclus' death, he of course comes back to war and practic practically single handed single handedly wins the war by killing half the Trojans in the Scamandro River. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When I, I told you this before about the, I, I found really poetic uh, the hugging of the knees mm -hmm. in the Scamandro River. Right. When Achilles is, is practically filling the river with blood and bodies, yeah. uh, there's this one, I don't remember his name, but uh, there's this one last uh, Trojan warrior, and he, mm -hmm. he, 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 he pleads for mercy, he hugs Achilles' knees, he mm -hmm. hugs his knees, and he yeah. says, please forgive me, and he... he, he, he he talks a bit about the yeah. forgive me. I am, you know, I am my father's son. My father is a great man. I am a great man. Yeah. I have a wife, whatever. And Achilles yeah. is just puts a spear through his neck, you know? 
by yeah. by fulfilling his grad, you know. And then of yeah, course we yeah. know he then goes to to, to in the fourth in the fourth uh, fulfillment of his grad of his passion he goes to to the Trojan Wall and starts chasing mm-hmm. uh, starts chasing Nick Hector through the through the city yeah. until uh, until Hector says well I might might as well fight which is also pretty much the whole point that we that we will make you know yeah. Achilles is going to kill me. I, I will not let Achilles kill me while running, so I'm yeah. gonna stand up. Exactly, this is the, yeah, I'm that's fine. that's the lesson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, and you must, uh, you must a, hold honor as sacrosanct in your life, valor, yeah. honor, and, and virtue. And that is the lesson. Yeah, yeah. of course. Unto death, because you're gonna die anyways. But um, yeah. oh, there's also there's another element I wanted to bring up that you reminded me of there. So it, like eventually Achilles does win in his side. They Troy falls. So godlike yeah. Achilles wins today. But it's not just Achilles. There's the cleverness of Odysseus involved, very much involved. And the um, various, uh, even Agamemnon and the rest of them, everyone has their part to play. But like say, in the, especially in the case of Odysseus, it, there's the lesson there is that the gods want you to use whatever gifts you have, in his case, cleverness, you know, to whatever extreme you can manage. And um, yeah. it, 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 instead of instead of just total humility all the time, like to use the gifts that you're granted is sort of the yeah. lesson. And yeah, to... in, Mexico, in Mexico, we call it maña, which is like okay. this cleverness, this wit, which is not necessarily morally good. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> this is a good, I never heard this. Okay, good. Maña. Yeah, yeah. Maña with, with ñ. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Huh. So, so, so it's like, uh, like in sports or in war, when you do, when you do this clever, clever thing to, 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 to get your way. Yeah, yeah. Which is, of course, is not a whole, uh, you know, like, is not uh, friendly for the sport, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it gets your way. So that's how they say. It. Well, maybe that's some remnant in the Latin language of like a Roman uh, leftover Homer, Homeric ideal, even. Maybe probably surely. <laughs> I'm not sure. There's a maybe. There's a maybe. There's an English equivalent, but I can't think of it. Uh, yeah, no, neither that's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Neither good nor bad. Just like a sly cleverness. But yeah, yeah but what, what you but, say? But even, or even Hector. But even Hector, you must say in his own way. Also, he's like the he's he's also a hero. There's no. It's not like one side is wholly good or bad. Well, like Paris is portrayed as fairly not even not even entirely bad either, but. Because he is less courageous than his than Hector, and so forth, he's portrayed badly. Uh, yeah, but Paris, Paris. Actually, that's that's a really good point that you brought up. That I have like uh, I actually want to talk about this about good versus bad. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, because uh, the 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 hero who is most portrayed as an asshole in the in the Iliad is Paris. Yeah, because yeah. He, he he steals Helen and he steals like a lot of wealth from Menelaus. Yeah. Like he used he he of course he was a womanizer, he was like a lover of like he was he was like the like the prodigal child, mm-hmm. the prodigal child of Aphrodite. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So but in but it he wasn't like he he was he's not evil. I mean he, he was just yeah. Working like you said, every every hero, every good man, every proper man has to to live by the better that they can do. You know, Achilles yeah. lives by killing. Yeah. Hector lives by his duty. Yeah. Um, Agamemnon lives by conquering. Yeah. Paris lives by loving, by loving woman. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that's, yeah. That, that's that's the way he is. He's not evil because of that. I mean, he's he's kind of an asshole because he started a war, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he's not like Sauron, you know, from the Lord of the Rings, who is the pure evil and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that that's a point I want to come across because right. there's another another Russian writer, which is Leo Tolstoy, which I really yeah. admire too. Yes, also brilliant. Yes, I love him. Yeah. Uh, he says like he he has a quote which I think this quote has to be thought. To every man or woman who wants to get involved into art, which is this: mediocre stories 
have good versus evil. Mm -hmm. Great stories have good versus good. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. And it's this true. is something we have lost, apparently. Yeah. We, yeah. we, this is the, I, I get angry with this. I'm sorry. I'm angry because <laughs> because the, this is it, it's it's really 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 uh, uh, mind numbing how how stupid uh, modern writers make movies or novels or where this is this 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 damn bad guy and this damn good 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 guys and the good guys yeah. win or sometimes the bad guys win because they are yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I think it's a really good point to come across to the with the Iliad because in the Iliad there's no bad guys. Yeah, well, it's very no that has a very biblical Christian root. That's like of heaven course. and hell. Yeah, that's and, really the binary there. That Judeo Christianity. That, yes, I mean I don't want to bash Christianity either. I'm we were raised Catholic. It's with us in a way always, you know. It, but that is we're just comparing we're just comparing and contrasting here and looking at. I, agree. I don't want to bash Christianity too because I, yeah. I have like a lot of a lot of love for what 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 it means, but I don't consider myself a, <laughs> a Christian or Catholic anymore. Yeah, I, I've but definitely. I, yeah, yeah, I think you you neither do you, right? <laughs> no, no, I can't really uh -huh. anymore. I mean, so, it's, it's there in a way. There's elements. It's like we're a mix of this and the pagan now or something. It's weird, you know, because you we can't escape certain the morality of it. We can try. I mean, I more and more maybe I my morality does change, but I don't know. It's like we're a mix of these things. There's a moth here. Yeah, yeah. We're we're a we're a mixture. And above all, I'm a guy. I'm a guy born in America in Mexico. So I'm a I'm a mixture of pretty much a lot of a lot of of, of races and cultures and and yeah. it's it's fine because I get to pick which one I like the most. <laughs> So, so well, uh, like little yeah. little things. I I don't like to dive in into just this one. Like, like I don't know. My father is Lebanese, okay. and I don't. I, I I like stuff about the you know the Phoenicians. You know the Phoenicians yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. much came up with the with the damn alphabet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I like stuff. And they were they were always great businessmen and and and, and, and all, really really good traders. You know, and I like that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and on, on my mother's side, we are more from uh, from from the north of Spain. Right, right. So there's also this like Celtic background in my right. last name, yeah. which yeah, I yeah. really dig also. So, so <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get to I, I get to pick which. Ah, and I was born in in the Aztec in the Aztec culture, you know, which I really think is beautiful. Yeah, I yeah. think it's beautiful too. Even 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 though I have no blood of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's it's really really awesome to have been born in such a rich cultural place like like this place, you know. Yeah, I'd like to go to Mexico again. I was there when I was younger. I was only got to go to Puerto Vallarta or one of these oh, tourist, yeah. only a, a tourist place. But I, I'd love to go to the desert, uh, like some of the real desert places. I don't know where. the desert places in Mexico. Eh? Well, I believe there's some. I know that uh, there are. Yeah, th those are in the north. Are they in the north? Yeah, in the north. Yeah, like, I mean, there's, all, there's all all different places there. I'd like to see. Like, I know it's. Uh, I really like Mexican food. <laughs> I think wow, it's wow. Of, Oof, yeah, it, it is one of the best. There's no denying it. Like one, like I think the best is probably French slash Italian, and actually I like Japanese a lot too. But Mexicans right up there, like top three. Yeah, I think I think the best food in the world, objectively. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I could say Mexican food because if that's my you favorite. Could, and you wouldn't be wrong necessarily, yeah. You could say that. Yeah, well, yeah, but objectively, I think it's Mediterranean food the best for me. Like, okay. Yeah. Like the, the whole the whole Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brings a lot of like the best food. I mean, olives and the, from yeah. Lebanese food, Italian right. food. I mean, yeah. even even uh, North African Arab food. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It, well, it well, anyway, I think we we got off hey, the we point. Of... Sorry, we digress. Yeah. We won't leave it. For the day. <laughs> so sorry. Let me find another question for you here. So. Oh, before that, can I tell okay. you something? Yeah. Uh, I brought up uh, a little bit of my blood, and I want to say something that I really wanted to talk about. This uh, the, uh, the clash between Glaucus and Diomedes, okay. or Diomedes. Is that yeah. how you pronounce it? Diomedes, I would say, yeah. Diomedes, yeah. 
yeah. well between glaucus and diomedes yeah which is really really damn interesting and really brings up this uh, whole uh, blood blood uh, the, the importance of the blood mm -hmm. in and and the and the cherishedness the, mm -hmm. the, the the cherishedness of the of our ancestors mm -hmm. in the Hiliad, which is the clash between glaucus and diomedes what happens is this when 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 diomedes uh, uh, they are fighting and yeah. he finds glaucus And Diomedes asks, um, who are you? No? Who are you? He doesn't, he doesn't recognize you. Sorry. And, uh, and Glaucus then starts to talk like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like, uh, like 50 lines of verses mm -hmm. where he, he starts talking about his father, his cousin, his two, about two grandfathers, Two yeah. great grandfathers yeah. and, 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 and an uncle, I think. And he also mentioned an uncle by name, every one of them by name and, and by what they did. Yeah. But he never mentions himself. Right. And I think that's a beautiful thing. He, he introduces himself. He never mentions his name. He only mentions his yeah. father yeah. and so on, so on, so on. And yeah. then the Diomedes, uh, the Diomedes uh, realizes that uh, one of them, one of the grand grandfathers, I think, was a was a, a guest in one of his own father's house. Right, right, right. So, I remember. So that, that yeah. was a really big thing in ancient Greece when you had like a guest to come into your house. It was a friend for life. So the Diomedes then uh, then. Uh, Then, like he says, you are a great warrior, and we, uh, and he says, that you mean says this? I have a lot of Trojans to kill. You have a lot of Greeks to kill. So let us shake hands and part our ways. And they share, they share kind of, they share a few of their pieces of armor, and yeah, and that's it. They yeah. they continue, and they never meet yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Once again, the the rules of honor. Yeah, uh, impeding. Yeah, you obey them, uh, no matter what. Yeah, uh, yeah, and genealogy, ancestry, and like you, you are a representation of your entire family and tradition. Yeah, uh, more so than yourself. <laughs> of course, good, good way to look at things. Keep the hidden world above above reality. Yeah, that is a good one. That's where Diomedes goes on to like wound a god, I believe, as well. He's uh, isn't he the only one to actually? Doesn't he throw yeah. a spear? And, he like, won't. He won't Saris. I think he would Aries, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is strange. I'm not sure what to make of that one. Uh, it's well, a... Diomedes is portrayed as the greatest warrior, mm -hmm. uh, except for Achilles. Yeah, yeah. But Diomedes is, is also portrayed. I think it it goes more more about that way, you know, like to to paint him more as a great warrior. Mm -hmm. He just like <laughs> he just like. Uh, Practically who's, who's the god of war? Who's the god of war somehow? <laughs> so it, it's, it's again, it's a lesson in that your own, you know, the strength of your own uh, abilities and personality are like more than maybe you would think that even, you know, you can affect the hidden world beyond the material world even. Maybe that's the lesson there, you might say. Uh, you well, know, yeah, though, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, because it's 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 more like a like a like this fine like this thin line of 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 th this thin line that divides uh, the world of gods and the world of men, mm. and somehow uh, the god of war Ares transgrades. Uh, how do you say this? Is uh, crosses that line, transgresses, yeah, okay, yeah. Trans transgresses that line. And comes yeah. into the the world of men, and Diomedes mm -hmm. is one of the greatest warriors in the world of men. Yeah. In the world of men, so 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 he ends up wounding him. I think that's yeah. that's a pretty interesting because he 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 makes this transgression to come into the world of men. Even mm -hmm. though he's a god, he ends mm -hmm. up he ends up wounded. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It is. <laughs> It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is very interesting. Um, so well, so, now uh, we you, have. 
What was the question? I'm sorry, you you were gonna ask me a question. I, yeah, I got that question. I got more here if you want. Yeah, we're we're how long we had, had now? It's, we should be. It's it's good. Anyways, it's long enough. Well, uh, a couple more and we'll finish it up. I think we're. I mean, we can do another one on about it as well, or we could do one on the Odyssey. Actually, I would, we should do the Odyssey as well. Yeah, like later. I just read. I, uh, I just read it again, like last month. Uh, so good. Yeah. So let me see. Here. Um, Okay, what about fate and destiny? What would you say about that in the in the <laughs> in, 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 implacable implacable fate, like inescapable destiny and fate? Well, the, I, uh, um, necessitas, the goddess, or uh, what's her name in Greek? Um, oh, what's her name? Oh, I forget. The, sorry. Uh, of who? I look it up. Hold on. The name of who? Necessitas, yeah. the Roman goddess of uh, who has the spindle of uh, destiny, An- 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 Ananke, Ananke in Greek. And in fact, the way, the way in the and this is interesting too that Zeus himself did not know the outcome of the war, and had to consult the fates and NK with her spindle to see uh, the future. That he himself was not so omnipotent to know the future or the outcome of the war, which again is very possibly Greek or Neoplatonist in that there we have the gods and then we have the one as the Neoplatonists would say, above all, which is the combination of all. Uh, so that in in that sense, even Zeus is not omnipotent the way the biblical God is. Yeah, so. it, sounds, it's, it sounds weird for us. Uh, I think it sounds weird because we were, as, as, as you and I were born, were raised Catholic. Yeah. So it sounds weird to, to mm-hmm. read about the, the most powerful God who mm-hmm. is not really all powerful you know so it's really mm-hmm. like kind of uh, <laughs> what's going on no but but i think that's just because uh, we well, were, he's mostly uh, he's mostly all powerful he's almost all powerful well <laughs> but, yeah yeah he's almost yeah yeah but not not entirely to know the future you know or to control because yeah. he does he he also sleeps and when he sleeps the other gods make mischiefs so yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of the jokes, the inside jokes that Homer makes in the Iliad. <laughs> when when you think, so- a, you, think a, you think it's a joke and it's not a matter matter of liturgy. It, you think it's a you think he's making a joke? Yeah. Not 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 a joke. As uh, just like kind of uh, implementing like this kind of of you know like uh, how can you say like these hu- human traits like. Mm-hmm. Zeus is so tired that he takes a nap, <laughs> and yeah. and and the other guy, yeah, 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 yeah. the other guy, the, the, the other guys like take this opportunity that Zeus is sleeping to, to make mischiefs in the war, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah. So and he wakes up and he gets all angry and, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's a really <laughs> that's that's the the gods in the in Greek mythology are are really like the. Like archetypes of human emotions, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For these hidden hidden forces, and that's the way I see them too. Like these hidden forces and energies, which are inexplicable, which you have to sort of anthropomorphize, which Christians do as well. And if we sound larpy with our talk, I mean, the Christians have have every bit of, uh, you know, there's all sorts of talk of giants and uh, angels and uh, seraphims and you know dragons in the Bible. Like, oh yeah, there's much of the similar type of talk. And which yeah, sound? And in, in their own yeah, yeah. And there's there's questions about the the omnipotent God uh, idea. It is then why does he uh, allow these billions? Are why are these billions of people consigned to hell? Why did he bring them into existence just to leave them in hell for eternity? <laughs> you know, it, there's yeah, there's yeah, always the yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the contradiction of Epicurus. Mm, yeah. If 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 God the um, like the, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's like a syllogism. I don't know if that's a word. It's syllogism. Syllogism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, syllogism. Yeah. Okay, so it's translate, translated the same. Yeah. You know, if if God is all powerful, why does he let evil in the world? Okay, yeah. so he's bad, you know. And <laughs> if, if uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just, it's can, but what anyway? It's sort of like, yeah, it's it's more like, yeah, but what the Greek idea would be more that God, the God, the gods, first of all, there's like powers beyond the gods as we know them, or a power even, but the gods themselves are, it's not that they're indifferent to human life or suffering, but they are just that level above us, um, 
and they, you know, somewhat indifferent. <laughs> they, you know. Yeah, but uh, but but uh, hear me out on this one. Okay. Uh, as I told you that the gods, that the Greek gods were like portrayals, like archetypes of of yeah. of, of human emotions. You know, I mean, you don't have to yeah, be yeah, a, yeah. you don't have to have a major in literature to know or in mythology to know that Zeus is a portrayal of lust. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 you know, on, on power, you know, whatever. And, yeah. and, 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 and in the world of men, the heroes in the Iliad and then in the Odyssey, the ones who are closer to the gods are the ones who feel the most, who, who, right. who, who live by their passion. Like Achilles, Achilles is the perfect example. He lives and he dies by his passion, and that's what makes him a demigod, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah. that's that. Yeah, no, that's definitely part of it as well. I mean, it's hard, as with anything, to get your mind around these archaic uh, worldviews. We can only, I mean, if they hadn't burned down the Library of Alexandria, we might have more. <laughs> yeah. Have more to Who knows? At. Who knows? For me, for me Plato, I, if you, for me, I look at Plato as a mystic, mysticist more than a philosopher. And that fills in a lot of gaps for me. That's why. That's the way I tend to look at it. That Homer. Oh, for me. The, that, yeah. Go, have, what, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. So finish it up. Um, like Homer is the the background, flesh and blood mythology, and the virtues and values are explained there on how to best cope yeah. with life. But that Plato successfully gives you the mis uh, like a true European mysticism, which is overlooked because people think he's literally talking about the Republic the whole time, which you know maybe he is as well. But, wow, I agree completely. That's you 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 don't know how many times I angrily and probably drunkenly also <laughs> have 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 made rants about how Plato is the is should be read at least at the same uh, at the same uh, proportion as Aristotle is. Yeah. Because yeah. Aristotle is more scientific it's more pragmatic, you know, it's more Newton. Yeah. We live more in a Newton. We, we live by the laws of Newton, you know? And yeah, Plato, yeah. Some, Plato is only read by, 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 by his republic, by his politic views, you know? Which, yeah, are, yeah. which are okay, I guess. I mean, but that's like, like, that's like the least interesting thing that he said, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. People get hung up on the fact that he's, that, oh, so he's like a communist or something, but no, it's it's... It's not really what it's about, and even no. I, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a modern philosopher. What's his name? Grimes, Pierre Grimes, and he had a Grimes video had where he was, talking about, he, he was talking about maybe you would know this. If you translate uh, the Republic, there's a word he uses for I can't remember what. Maybe for the Republic, it's an ancient Greek word for something that he that he references continually that has a dual meaning that could mean uh, this sort of political idea. It can also mean the self. And he postulates that actually a good deal of the Republic is about how to conduct yourself and down to the old, the ancient maxim, know thyself, etc. And maybe there, I could see that because a lot of it is about, I mean, most of it is about how to... Yeah, how, 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 uh, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, that that could be understood more because, uh, because of his philosopher kings, you know, he wanted to have philosopher kings. Yeah, yeah, and and a, a philosopher in that time, it wasn't like like the intellectual kind of philosopher we have right now. Uh, a philosopher yeah. in that time was pretty much like a priest, you know, like a like yeah. a brujo, like a shaman. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. a really, yeah. So, so I think it goes more. As it should that be. Way. As it should be. That's what a philosopher should be. <laughs> yeah, wizard. Them, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but uh, anyways, I, I I wanted to talk about the, about the, the the fate, okay. which is just, um, which is I think a, a really nice way to wrap it, to wrap this all up. Okay, uh, good idea. Yeah, I have this theory. I have this theory. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna lean a little bit out of the Iliad to talk about about uh, about this theory of mine about the, the the three types of fate. You know okay. that I that I know that I know of. The first one is Oedipus. You know Oedipus's is fate. It? You know so uh, he kills his he, Oedipus. Oh, Oedipus. 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 Yeah, Oedipus. 
The guy who kills his mother. Who kills his father. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, sorry, sorry for the mispronunciation. No problem. Oedipus, I would say. Oedipus, yeah. Oedipus, okay. So the first one is Oedipus. Oedipus doesn't realize he kills his father because his father is 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 is, is pretty much dressed like a homeless guy. And he right. kind he's kind of crazy and he attacks Oedipus and yeah. and he ends up he ends up killing him, later yeah. realizing he was his father. And then he has to marry his mother to be king. Yeah. So this is the this is the first kind of fate, you know. This is the fate that cannot be avoided at all costs. You yeah. cannot avoid this kind of fate. The fate right. is greatened by the prophets, and you cannot avoid. No matter if you know, no matter if you don't know, you cannot avoid this fate. This is right. well. This is the first kind of fate. Right. Second kind of faith, which, which is the Shakespearean, and it's a really interesting kind okay. of faith. It's the Macbeth faith. Mm -hmm. uh, if if someone is listening to this and has read Macbeth, I think knows pretty much what I'm going to say, which okay. is when Macbeth and his body encounters the the, the witches mm -hmm. uh, before going back home. Uh, the witches okay. say. Uh, you are going to be king and his son is going to succeed you. Right. So, so, uh, the son of your body is going to succeed you, no? Right, and then right, right. Macbeth comes home and he, he, he gets to be king. And that's mm -hmm. when that's where the interesting part comes, you know. Macbeth starts losing his mind also mm -hmm. thanks to, to his, to his uh, manipulative uh, queen. Because yeah. she starts, they, they cannot have a son, and they, they both start losing their mind because yeah. the prophecy has come true, and the prophecy is gonna come true again. Yeah. By yeah. by, why why is my body and 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 and, 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 and well, you know, the tragedy of Macbeth. Then he ends, yeah. he ends up there. You know, yeah. the yeah. point yeah. about this is is the fate, the fate that I'm talking about. So this is the ambiguous kind of fate, the kind of fate that you come into realization of what you are going to become. You know right. what you're going to become. And yeah. is that realization the reason you became that? Or you were meant to become king anyway? Or you weren't going to become king because you started trying to become king? Or you became king because you knew you were going to be king? That's the ambiguous part, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a, oh, why oh, oh, the only reason the the son of your friend succeeded you as a king was because you lost your mind because if you weren't uh, predisposed to that kind of knowledge have you uh, <laughs> have you had a, acted the, differently I don't know that's that's why it's ambiguous kind of fate you know right okay yeah I see and the third one okay. Which is the Nietzsche, the Nietzsche one, the philosopher Nietzsche, yep. German philosopher. Yep. yep. So uh, Nietzsche said, ah, just a parenthesis. Nietzsche is like one of the top five worst read uh, philosophers of all time. You know, no one knows how to read Nietzsche. Apparently, oh, apparently, everyone who reads Nietzsche is like a uh, like a fifteen year old atheist, and uh, I don't know. But what? Yeah, yeah. Well, atheists uh, tend to like him, right? yeah, nihilists. Even yeah, though he was yeah, nihilists. Yeah, Nietzsche he, was, he was, a, he was more, more, of a pagan, more of a pagan than a than an atheist, uh, really. Yeah, but, uh, yeah of course. They, they they take what they want from him, I guess. Yeah. Well. Well. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Nietzsche had this theory that is called amor fati, which is uh, yeah. is late is Latin for for amor. Yeah. Love your faith. Acceptance, right? That, uh, yeah, that is beautiful. Amor, the word in Spanish for love, is mm -hmm. acceptance. In comes from acceptance. Yeah, yeah. The Romans um, would never say love. They'd be too. They'd be too harsh. Yeah, to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That 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 wouldn't be too manly, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wouldn't say love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and. Um, and fati, which means with fate, you know, yeah, the, the yeah, wording, yeah. the word fate comes from Latin fati. 
yeah. acceptance yeah. of fate. And yeah. this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful thought, and this is something which will track, which will track me back to the Iliad, because yeah. this is the most beautiful way of faith there is. Nietzsche said, "Acceptance of destiny, acceptance of fate," mm -hmm. and he te he he tells a personal story. Nietzsche uh, eventually died of 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 this este, this STD. Uh, how do you say it in English? The well, they, they say he died of um, syphilis, but I've, I've heard yeah, things. Yeah, I can, it's, it's I heard, I've heard accounts later. I've heard accounts recently that that is sort of invented about him by his enemies, and that he probably just had brain cancer or something. But anyways, really? Uh, yeah, the official the official thing says uh, says syphilis, but maybe I, I I can't say for sure. I read something like recently saying, oh, that that's actually like after the fact, well, people saying to his enemies saying that because you know to discredit him. But maybe you know you don't know. Well, yes. this, this anecdote pretty much is on the basis that he had syphilis. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that, well he, he probably maybe he did, maybe he did. You know. So, so well, the, the the anecdote the anecdote goes like this. You know, okay. Nietzsche yeah. Nietzsche says this. Uh, he says he lost his virginity. He was a really shy man. He he mm -hmm. he wasn't good with the with, with the woman. So, yeah, so yeah. he was a shy guy. You know, like. Uh, yeah. He lost his uh, his virginity by peer pressure. Yeah. Uh, by his friends that right. got him a prostitute, and yeah. that prostitute where he lost his virginity was when he got syphilis. No, oh, maybe that. Okay. I mean, right. I, I'm not talking about historical accuracy or nothing like that. I'm just no, talking maybe about. It's the probably true. Yeah. No, I, I didn't know that story, but so yeah. It, it's so, probably true, but but I'm talking more about the myth of the fate. But then, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Nietzsche, Nietzsche got this STD, this syphilis that eventually got him to pretty much lose his mind and mm -hmm. die. And the story goes like this: when he was, when he was in his later years, pretty much, pretty much done with his life in in, yep. Yep. in, in Italy. I don't remember which part of Italy, and. Uh, And he says this, I, I, I am grateful. I am grateful for that, for that prostitute who gave me syphilis, who gave me, who, who made me crazy and who will, and, and the syphilis that will kill me. I am grateful for that prostitute that gave me this because she made me the man I am today. And, and this well. is the third kind of fate. This is the fate where The fate is not in the future. The fate is right. pretty much in the past. You are yeah. you, you will not you will not be anything. To yeah. today, tomorrow never comes, as the wizard right. Ozzy Osbourne said. You know, tomorrow never comes. You are today, you are a man today, you are a woman today, mm -hmm. you are someone today, and that 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 the fate of your present self mm -hmm. that it is today has been made by all the decisions that you took by all the things that life has right. given you. And you have, and that's, that's the fate that yes. you have. What that's what made you. And and I think that that's the most beautiful thing. Yes. That, 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 that I can think of about faith. <laughs> yes. You know? Yes, it is. Yes. No, it is beautiful. And, and uh -huh. no, I'm done. I'm done. You, you, Sorry. Well, yes, I, no, I, I totally agree. So the three types of fate, but they're all kind of, uh, you know, they're not so different. <laughs> there's the, oh, oh, there's oh, a certain oh, in, oh. inevitability in all of them that links them at, to into what we know as fate or destiny, which is more of a fate or destiny is a bit more pagan than Christian because Christian is more about the choice and the free will stuff and yeah, thinking sure. that, I mean, there is a destiny as well. Maybe you're fated to be good or bad according to Christian values, but I don't know. It's more, it's an ancient concept and it's, it's interesting. It brings up questions about time and all sorts of things that we could probably do a whole podcast about, but yes, I totally agree. And I think that was, it does apply perfectly to the Iliad. Everyone's fate there is laid out as it should be according to their character in the extreme. Um, And, and you have to remember this. Everyone chooses their fate. Yes. Yes, they do. There is this choice. 
Aquiles, his, the, the mother of Aquiles tells him he's going to die if he if he goes to 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 take revenge of his friend Patroclus. Yeah. And kills Hector. He knows he will die. You will yeah. die. You will be, yeah. if you yeah. want to be an old man and live a happily life. But if you go kill Hector and take revenge of Patroclus, you will die. And yeah. he goes to die. And when yeah. Hector, when, when he kills Hector, you know, uh, we talked earlier about this, H Hector uh, stops running and accepts his fate and says, I will die, but I will die fighting. And then yeah. when Achilles strikes him down through a spear through the neck, yep. uh, really gory, by the way, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says, Hector says to Achilles, you know, you know, you will die in this war, in this war. You know you will die in this war. Yeah. And Achilles said, "Yeah, I know. Yeah, of course I know. That's but I came to kill you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Amor Fati. That's Amor Fati right there. Yeah, Amor Fati. Yeah. Yes. No, we've uh, definitely done a good job, I think, and that is as good as we can do with what we know and what we think, and we both agree on most of it. And yeah, pretty much everything. No. That's as good as we can do. Maybe we could talk about it more. There's probably other things we could think about and raise about it, but for now, that's a good that's a good start. <laughs> it wasn't for long anyway. So, yeah. yeah like so thank, thanks, for, thanks for doing that. That was great. That, that was perfect. It was exactly right. we. <laughs> there was no no disagreement. I mean, maybe minor disagreements, but we were, we're touching on it. As uh, I mean, we maybe we can do it again and on the Iliad and like try to draw the mysticism more out of it because it's hard. I'd have, I might probably have to re reread it, but anyways, we are. We did the best we could, and I'm, I'm just maybe there's nothing else quite like it that you could find right now. I don't know. Maybe other people are doing this as well, but not that I know. Of. And we'll yeah, have to do one. On, we should do one on Plato at some point too. We should do the Odyssey and then Plato. Uh, yeah, same, Plato same is, cool. yeah, yeah. So well, that, uh, thank you, Brandon. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean I'm, I'm sorry again for the first ten minutes that my internet connection wasn't pretty good. Apparently. But okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we still got it. At least we didn't give up. If we would have given up, we wouldn't have got any of that. So, yeah, we did it. It was it was fate. <laughs> it was fate that it should come, fate. come together. Yes. Yeah. It really was. Well, then, so, then again, thank you very much, and we'll talk soon again about the Odyssey or whatever. Yeah. I'm more yeah. than glad. Yeah. Okay. Good. Maybe in the next few weeks we'll we'll line that up. So, thanks, Michelle. And I'll say goodbye.